This is part three of our course, in which we continue the cross-country flight in the glider. Now let's get back to our flight. We've left the Cambridge frequency and we're considering calling Lakenheath Radar, who control the combined mats of Lakenheath and Mildenhall. We're about to fly through Lakenheath's mats. Whilst strictly this is Class G and we don't need to talk to them, given the traffic that they're controlling, that might be foolish. From Lakenheath, which is the northeastern of the two airfields in the combined mats, fly F 15 fast jets. When they get airborne, they climb rapidly. We probably wouldn't want to be an unknown target above the airfield, even if we were well above the ATZ. On recovery, they often come in for a visual circuit, starting at about 3,000 feet and joining from the north or from the east. Mildenhall has a lot of tankers and transport aircraft that do radar circuits outside of the mats, again at about 3,000 feet. Climbouts are on the Mildenhall mat stubs and beyond them. The ability of the pilots in these aircraft to look out is pretty limited just by the small size of the windscreen. So at normal gliding heights, we're very likely to be in the path of these aircraft, whether we're inside, above, or outside the mats. So a call is a good idea, and a transponder is a really good idea. Here's the conversation that we might have with Lakenheath. Lakenheath radar. Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta. Request basic service and match penetration. Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, are you transponder equipped? Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, negative. Glider Charlie Delta, pass your message. Glider Charlie Delta from Granston Lodge to Granston Lodge, three miles east of Newmarket, altitude 3000 feet, QNH 1021, routing Bury St Edmunds, then west northwest. Glider Charlie Delta, Roger. Basic service. Mats penetration approved. Remain clear of the Mildenhall and Lakenheath ATZs. Basic service, Wilco. Glider Charlie Delta. Again, in telling them our intentions, we've used places that they're likely to understand. In this case, we're talking to American controllers who are likely not to know anything other than very local place names. So far, we've been asking for a basic service. But what is that? And what are the other options? Well, basic service is one of the four available air traffic services outside controlled airspace. The others are traffic service, deconfliction service, and procedural service. As a glider pilot, we're only likely to use the first two, but we need to know roughly what the others are. Let's have a look at each of them. Firstly, basic service. What you get is information conducive to safe flight. For example, the weather, altimeter pressure settings, QNH or QFE, uh, a runway in use. You won't necessarily get a radar service. You may be told about traffic, but don't count on it. A basic service can be provided by air traffic control or by an FISO. And this is the service that glider pilots use most of the time. A traffic service gives you radar derived information about traffic in your vicinity. For example, the controller might say, pop up traffic in your 12 o'clock at two miles, reciprocal heading indicating same level. That could be useful for a glider in IMC if you think that your biggest threat was aeroplanes. It's rather less useful for a glider if there are a lot of other gliders around. A deconfliction service is another radar service where the controller will not only identify traffic, but will try and keep you away from it. You need to do what the controller tells you. It's really a service for IFR aircraft in areas that aren't busy and it's very unlikely to be useful for a glider pilot. 
Lastly, a procedural service is typically used for IFR aircraft in the absence of radar cover to achieve separation from other IFR aircraft. A basic service is also included. This won't be used by gliders. Let's take some time to check understanding. What does ATS OCAS mean? What are the four types? How do they differ? Which might you use as a glider pilot? If you can answer these questions, keep going. If not, go back and revise. Let's get back to our flight. A little later on, and we're going past Northampton Sywell Airfield. But we're a little to the north of track and fairly high. So should we give Sywell a call? Sywell might be a good landing place if we need it. They're very friendly. A look at the frequency reference card gives us the frequency and tells us that they have an APHIS, so their call sign will be Sywell Information. We know, because we've been curious and have looked at the AIP for airfields that we might go past, that Sywell has a new instrument approach. However, it doesn't have a hold. But given our position and height, we don't need to call them right now. But we could at the very least make sure that their frequency is in the radio standby and possibly listen in to give us an awareness of any inbound or outbound traffic. But for practice, let's assume we're getting a little low and we decide to give Sywell a call just in case we need to go there. What would you say? And what will they say back to you? A little later, we are approaching our next turning point, Endstone. Should we give them a call? Endstone might well be another good landing place if we need it. They're also very friendly. A look at the FRC gives us the frequency and tells us that they have an air ground communication service, so their call sign will be Endstone Radio. But if we're fairly high, as we get to the overhead, we might not call them. But we will set up the frequency in the standby in case we need it. And again, we may listen in to check to see if there's anything that might affect us. Again, for practice, let's assume we're getting a little low and we decide to give Enstone a call just in case we need to go there. What would you say? What will they say back to you? After Enstone, we approach Oxford. Oxford is a busy airport with a lot of training traffic, much of it using their instrument approach. There's a hold above the airfield. If we get close, at pretty much any height, it's the least we can do to give them a call and tell them where we are and what we're doing. If we have a transponder, we can use their listening squawk and just listen in on their frequency. They'll call us if they want to know more. Whether we call Oxford or Enstone or both will depend on our exact routing and height. We also have, at some point, to call Bryce Norton to arrange a crossing of their Class D airspace, so we need to prepare for that. As an aside, this selection of task is not ideal since we're very dependent on getting that Class D crossing. If it's refused, it's going to be a long way around. But we did it as an exercise to show what the RT would be like. We mentioned listening squawk. So what's that? It's a way of being in contact with an air traffic control unit without actually having to talk to them. All you do is set the listening squawk on your transponder and the associated frequency on the radio. There's no need to make a radio call. If air traffic control need to talk to you, they'll call, either with your call sign, if they have mode S, or else with your position. That's useful if you're close to airspace, for example, approaching Leicester North from the south, or passing somewhere like Oxford, which is busy.
Bryce Norton is class D, so we need a clearance to enter the zone. The phraseology is very similar to crossing a mat, which we did earlier. However, whereas a mat is class G and a clearance is not obligatory, most control zones are class D and they do require a clearance. We want to call about 10 minutes before we need to enter. Here's what we might say. In this case, assuming we have a transponder. Bryce Zone, Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, request basic service and zone penetration. Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, are you transponder equipped? Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, AFA. Glider Charlie Delta, Squawk 6201 and pass your message. 6201, standby, Glider Charlie Delta. Glider Charlie Delta, from Granston Lodge to Granston Lodge, five miles west of Oxford Airport, altitude 3000 feet, QNH 1021, VFR, routing south. Glider Charlie Delta, radar identified, basic service, cleared to cross the Bryce Zone VFR remaining east of Whitney. Basic service, cleared to cross the Bryce Zone VFR remaining east of Whitney, Glider Charlie Delta. There are some things to note here. The word standby can be very useful. In this case, we used it to give us some time to set the squawk before we call back with the full message. Bryce have actually given us a clearance here. We must obey it. In this case, the clearance is to cross the zone, but to remain east of Whitney. If we want to go further west than that, we must ask first. Other restrictions might include a not below or a not above. Hopefully, a not below will be a let me know if you're unable to stay above. But in any case, if you're in danger of not being able to meet it, say so early. Lastly, although glider pilots tend to measure distance in kilometres, air traffic work in nautical miles. Just divide kilometres by two. It's close enough. If you're staying in Class G airspace, your message does not need to include the flight rules you're using, that is, VFR, Visual Flight Rules, or IFR, Instrument Flight Rules. However, if you're looking to cross Class C, D or E airspace, you'll need to tell the controller whether you want a VFR, Special VFR or IFR clearance, and would then include your flight rules in the call. In Class C or E airspace, you need to maintain 1,000 feet vertically or 1,500 meters horizontally clear of cloud to fly VFR. It's the same in Class D or G airspace above 3,000 feet. If you're not VFR, you either need to be Special VFR, which is available in a control zone, or IFR. Special VFR would allow you to be in sight of the surface and clear of the cloud, and IFR, at least theoretically, would allow you to be in cloud. If we gain a clearance in controlled airspace, there's a built-in assumption that because we're a glider, we're likely to deviate from altitude and track. We may also stop to climb. The controller may, however, impose some other type of restriction. That's a hard limit and mustn't be broken without permission. It's possible a clearance won't be granted. Bryce N, Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, request basic service and zone penetration. Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, are you transponder equipped? Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, negative. Glider Charlie Delta, pass your message. Glider Charlie Delta, from Granston Lodge to Granston Lodge, five miles west of Oxford Airport, Altitude 3000 feet, QNH 1021, VFR, routing south. Glider Charlie Delta, unable to grant a clearance to cross the Bryce zone due to traffic, remain outside controlled airspace. Wilco, Glider Charlie Delta. If you're told no, you can't go there. 
you must go around. However, if the initial response is just remain outside controlled airspace, that doesn't mean no. It's just the normal response to such a request. It just means that you don't have a clearance yet. It's a holding position. As we enter the zone, we're likely to come under radar control. Glider Charlie Delta, entering controlled airspace, radar control. Radar control, Glider Charlie Delta. Glider Charlie Delta, leaving controlled airspace, basic service. Basic service, Glider Charlie Delta. Previously, we would have been receiving a basic service. However, this is only available outside controlled airspace. Inside controlled airspace, it's radar control. Remember, it's important to negotiate and to fully comply with any clearance that you have. If you can't comply with it, say so and say what you want. We may be told about traffic. Glider Charlie Delta, traffic three miles west of you, heading east is a KC-135 under my control, 1,000 feet above you. Glider Charlie Delta, traffic in sight. Glider Charlie Delta, traffic four miles south of you, heading west is a Cessna 172, indicating 500 feet below. Glider Charlie Delta, traffic not sighted. The response is either traffic in sight or traffic not sighted. Once clear of the zone, we can change to an en route frequency. Glider Charlie Delta, clear of your zone now. Request change en route. Glider Charlie Delta, clear to change en route. If we have a transponder, we'll be asked to squawk the conspicuity code. 7000 if we're VFR or 2000 if we're flying IFR. Glider Charlie Delta, clear of your zone now. Request change en route. Glider Charlie Delta, cleared to change en route. Squawk, conspicuity, radar service terminates. Conspicuity, Glider Charlie Delta. On the other hand, Bryce may suggest we leave the frequency. Glider Charlie Delta, you are clear of my zone. Squawk, conspicuity, cleared to change en route. Conspicuity, changing en route, Glider Charlie Delta. Let's talk a little bit about transponders, or secondary surveillance radar. Simply, they send some information to the controller's screen along with the position of the aircraft as detected by the radar. Mode A transponders just send a four-digit code. Each digit is in the range 0 to 7. Mode C transponders add the flight level of the aircraft based on the standard pressure setting. The controller system can then work out the altitude since it knows the Q&H. For this to happen, the transponder needs to be set to ALT. Mode S transponders add some information about the airframe, including the call sign. In the screen above, it can be seen that the transponder is set to the VFR conspicuity code 7000, that the call sign is Golf Tango Romeo India Golf, and that the aircraft is at minus flight level 04. That's minus 400 feet on 1013. Pressing the IDENT button uniquely identifies the return on the controller's screen. Don't do this unless you're asked to. Always have your transponder set to OUT, not just ON. That way, you're providing your altitude as well as your position, and that's important information for the controller. Here's a controller screen, and it shows uh, some of the codes from transponding aircraft. Here's some phraseology associated with transponders. The two that you'll come across most commonly are Glider Charlie Delta, Squawk 6201. That means set the code 6201 on your transponder you should always have altitude selected unless you're told otherwise. The second is Squawk Ident, and to which you will respond Ident Glider Charlie Delta, and that just means press the Ident button. Normally, the air traffic unit you are with will tell you which code to squawk. 
However, there are a number of codes that you can set on your own. 2000 is the IFR conspicuity code. You set it if you're IFR and haven't been told to set anything else. 7000 is the VFR conspicuity code. You set that if you're VFR and haven't been told to set anything else. 7700 is the emergency code. It's the equivalent of a mayday call. 7600 is for a radio failure, though you probably wouldn't bother in a glider. And 7500 is for a hijack, so be careful who you take in the back seat of your duo. Let's check understanding. How does a transponder work? Why is it useful? Which codes would be set and why? Let's get back to our flight. Now we've been working our way around London's airspace and we're just approaching Cranfield. As before, as we get close to Cranfield, we'll have their frequency selected and we'll be listening out. On occasion, they're quite a busy airfield with a lot of instrument traffic. We'll ask them for service if we get close, horizontally or vertically, to the airfield or its approaches. That way, we have good traffic awareness and if we need to enter their ATZ, the conversation is simple. Note that again, traffic, both VFR and IFR, is not just confined to the feathers. You need to understand how your local airfields operate. In, in Cranfield's case, the holds are based on top of Charlie India Tango, which is 10 kilometers from the airfield itself. And they go out to about 20 kilometers from the airfield. You can see the uh, Charlie India Tango beacon on the map, just northeast of the airfield. So it's perfectly possible to find instrument traffic um, all the way out past Bedford. Here's our initial conversation. We can listen out and get the Q&H ahead of time, or if not, they'll give it to us when we call. Cranfield Approach, Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, request basic service. Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, pass your message. Glider Golf Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, from Grandson Lodge to Grandson Lodge, four, four miles southwest of Bletchley, altitude 3000 feet, Q&H 1022, heading towards Grandson Lodge. Glider Charlie Delta, Roger, basic service, report leaving the frequency. Basic service, Wilco, Glider Charlie Delta. Today we're unlucky and we failed to find a climb. We decide that Cranfield is a good bolt hole and as we get closer we ask for permission to enter the ATZ. We have to use some plain English to communicate our intentions since a conventional join doesn't really work for a glider. Within the ATZ, we must be sensitive to the needs of other traffic. The airfield may not be busy, and they be, may be happy for us to find a climb and climb slowly away. If they are busy, we may have to land to get out of the way. Glad that Charlie Delta is descending through altitude 2,000 feet looking for a climb. Request enter your ATZ. Glad Char Charlie Delta, do you intend to land? Glad that Charlie Delta, not if I can find a climb. Glider Charlie Delta, Roger, cleared to enter the ATZ. Runway in use is 21 QFE 1007. Cleared to enter the ATZ. Runway 21 QFE 1007. Glider Charlie Delta. It really is a bad day. As we get lower, we decide we must land at Cranfield. In this case, we decide that we're best positioned to join the circuit downwind. Glider Charlie Delta is descending through height 1,000 feet. Request join downwind for landing runway 21. Glider Charlie Delta, join downwind runway 21. Circuit clear. Report downwind. Join downwind runway 21. Wilco. Glider Charlie Delta. Glider Charlie Delta, downwind. Glider Charlie Delta, Roger. Report final. Glider Charlie Delta, final. Glider Charlie Delta, runway 21, wind 2105, cleared to land. Runway 21, cleared to land, Glider Charlie Delta. And that's the end of our flight.